We are going to go ahead and get started. Shabbat Shalom, good morning, good afternoon, depending on your time zone. Welcome to the Open Temple Virtual Yoga Studio. My name is Zach Lasker. Um, I think I saw um, only familiar faces, but if for some reason there's someone in the studio for the first time, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here. So by way of getting started in terms of props, you should definitely have your mat. Um, my recommendation is to have two blocks or thick card cover books and either a couple of blankets or a pillow. Um, either one is fine. And then a strap, a rope, a belt. Those are props that will serve you well today. Um, this is, as most of, or all of you know, a pretty unique yoga space. We are going to flow through a sequence, the asana, the physical posture practice while integrating very mindful breath and really guided by some um, wisdom from the Jewish tradition and specific, specifically the Jewish tradition of Musar. We have been at this, believe it or not, for I think 16 weeks already, actually 16 weeks plus an additional two because we veered off our Musar path during the holiday of Passover. There are 18 different Musar soul traits that we have been exploring, one soul trait per week. And Musar is this idea that there is an ethical path, a way to conduct yourself that is mensch-like. And by focusing on one soul trait at a time, we optimize our ability to embody these traits in an authentic manner, to work on them, to be both inward facing and outward facing. And we have covered so many soul traits. Recent highlights have been loving kindness, responsibility and truth uh, and trust. And today we've arrived at the soul trait of faith. Um, and just to really dive into it, um, what the tradition teaches us is that faith is really not something to be understood intellectually. It's really something that is revealed to us through our life experience. And as somebody who has really devoted my life as a learner and as an educator to experiences or experiential education, I, I just wanna say this resonates deeply with me. So to get started, please place your blocks towards the back of your mat, stack, place one in back of the other. Um, if you have a towel or a pillow, place it on top. It's just going to make this deliciously restorative. Sit with your lower back um, right at the edge of the blocks. Start with your knees bent, feet planted on the floor. Extend your arms out in front of you, palms facing in towards each other. And then slowly lower down onto this padded block tower. Lay your head back. Let your arms float down to the ground, palms facing up, that's really important. And then straighten your right leg, your right heel is on the ground. Straighten your left leg, your left heel is on the ground. And let your ankles roll open. And by allowing your ankles to roll open, and extending your arms alongside you with the palms facing up. The blocks are opening up your chest. You are in a receiving position. And this was not by design, but I think it is a wonderful coincidence that this particular class focused on faith or emunah coincides with the days leading up to the holiday of Shavuot. Shavuot is the Jewish holiday where we celebrate the receiving of Torah and Mount Sinai. It's a holiday focused very much on revelation. So in order to experience revelation, in order to dive into your faith, we start in this opening, chest opener, heart opener, receiving position. 
Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Inhale to the count of five through your nose. So a very slow, intentional inhale. Let the breath linger. And then take to the count of five to let the breath exhale slowly out your mouth. So we start our practice with this breathing in a slow, intentional manner. And recognition that often life off the mat can be pretty busy. Moving at a fast pace. And we're taking this next hour, hour and 15 minutes to slow down, to be present. Turn your attention to the sound of the breath. See if you can hear the sound of waves crashing on the sand. Take two more cycles of breath. And then bend your right knee, plant your right foot on the ground. Bend your left knee and plant your left foot on the ground. Press your forearms and elbows into the earth to prop your torso up. And then remove the pillow or your blankets and place the blocks uh, comfortably at your side. You'll have the option of using them and then roll back down. Keep your knees bent, walk your feet in closer to your tush, and then take your strap or block or belt, loop it around the ball of your right foot and extend your right leg up towards the ceiling and stamp that right foot on the ceiling above you. And just turn your attention to the length of your right leg and the stretch in that right hamstring. Walk your hands up the strap towards your foot, keeping your shoulders melted onto the mat. And then those of you that want to deepen the stretch, lengthen your left leg towards the front of the room. Keep your left leg down on the ground. Take both ends of the strap or belt in your right hand and start to, and, uh, excuse me, to make this a restorative Supta Bada Padangustasana, take one of your blocks or books and 
press it against your right hip. And now take both ends of the strap in your right arm and start to extend your right leg out to the right side of the room, letting it rest on that blocker book. You can bend your right elbow, lower your upper right arm onto the ground, and then turn your gaze over to the left side of the room, extend your left arm to the left side, and breathe. Let's take three cycles of breath. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. And inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. One more inhale. And exhale as you draw your right leg back up towards the ceiling. If your left leg is straight, bend your left knee, plant your left foot on the ground. Take both hands onto the strap. Give your right leg one more stretch. Really lengthen, elongate that right leg up towards the ceiling and then bend your right knee, remove the strap. Right foot comes down onto the ground and second side. So have a blocker book set up outside of your left hip as we get started. If you want the restorative version of this Supta Parangustasana and loop the strap around the ball of your left foot, extend your left leg up towards the ceiling, stamp that left foot onto the ceiling above you, be mindful of your right knee. It might have a tendency to flop open to the right. Take it back towards the midline. Walk your hands up the strap just high enough so that you're stretching and lengthening your arms while keeping your shoulders melted onto the ground. And to deepen the stretch, start to lengthen your right leg forward towards the front of the room. Rotate your inner right thigh down towards the ground. That's going to help you to keep your right leg straight. And then take both ends of the strap into your left hand. And start to draw your left foot and leg out to the left side of the room. You can bend your left elbow and lower your left upper arm onto the ground. And then turn your gaze out to the right, extend your right arm out to the right, and take a few cycles of breath. Let's do it together. Inhale through your nose. Exhale out your mouth. Two more cycles. We use this breath to slow down and be present in this moment. And then draw that left foot back up towards the ceiling. Left hand on the left edge of the strap, right hand on the right side of the strap. Bend your right knee, plant your right foot on the ground, and then bend your left knee, remove the strap. You can place the strap off to the side. And then draw your knees into your chest and rotate your knees three times clockwise, just to start releasing your spine, massaging your lower back and then switch the direction of your circle so that you're going counterclockwise. Just bringing a little bit of movement into your body. And then pause and rock forward and back, building up some momentum. 
and sit up. And I want to suggest that you sit in Virasana in hero's pose. We've been doing this with some frequency lately. So the way to come into Virasana, sit up on your knees, place the block between your ankles or book, and then just sit down onto the block. Knees draw in towards each other. I'm gonna rotate so that I'm sitting towards you. And then inhale, lift your arms up. And exhale, lower your arms down. Palms face out. Inhale, arms rise up towards the ceiling. Palms face in towards each other. Arms are straight alongside your ears. And exhale, arms down. Palms face out. Inhale, arms lift up. And this time, please bend your left elbow, lower your left hand to your upper back. Use your right hand to grab onto that left elbow, pull it in towards your head. Take two cycles of breath, inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. And now inhale to straighten both arms up towards the ceiling. As you exhale, this time bend your right elbow, lower your right hand to your upper back. Take your left hand, grab onto that right elbow, hug it in towards your head. And two cycles of breath, inhaling through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. One more cycle of breath like that. And now inhale, extending both arms up straight and exhale, lower your arms down. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Start with a bend in your elbow, elbows. And then inhale, start to straighten your arms, knuckles point down towards the ground, opening up your chest, spreading those collarbones and drawing your shoulder blades together. And press the palms of your hands into each other. It's going to optimize the opening of your chest. And inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. And switch the interlace of your fingers. And then let's take two more cycles of breath. Knuckles are drawing down and back. Down and back. And then release the interlace of your fingers. Hands come onto your knees, palms facing up. And let your eyes close. And our exploration of this soul trait of faith comes with a, a core foundational belief expressed by Rabbi Pear, who said that everybody has faith but only some people know it. And so I think one of the primary questions that arises for us this week is not whether or not you have faith. And that might be faith in God. It might be faith in creation. It might be faith in life. It might be faith in yourself and the other people who inhabit this planet. So I want to suggest the primary question isn't whether or not you have faith, 
but where we discover and witness our faith in action. For those of you who read the email that I sent out about the class this week, one of our fellow yogis, Pamela Averick in New York, shared this wonderfully small but infinitely bright story of bearing witness to her faith sitting on the steps of the Metropolitan Museum and watching as an older gentleman who struggled with balance and strength was propped up by two younger people. And it took Pamela being there and being still, not running away from the museum, to be able to witness this moment of beauty. Press your palms together in the center of your chest. Take another long inhale. And exhale. And set an intention for your practice today. And then release your hands. If your eyes were closed, you can open them up. And let's meet in tabletop position. Press your palms into the mat, spread your fingers apart. Shoulders are directly above your wrists, hips above your knees. Back is in a neutral position. And then inhale, arch your back, shine your chest and heart forward. Come into cow, exhale, round your back, draw your belly into your chest. Come into a cat position. Inhale into cow. And exhale into cat. And then come back into a tabletop position and rotate your wrists 90 degrees, your hands and your wrists out to the sides of the room. So your fingertips are facing to the side. And let's do that cat and cow twice again. So inhale into cow, shine your chest and heart forward, lift your tush, arch your back. Exhale into a cat position, draw your belly into your chest. And of course, if your wrists are sensitive, you can keep your fingertips facing forward. Be your own guide in this practice. Mine are only suggestions. Come back into tabletop. And if you're ready to go a little bit deeper, now rotate your hands another 90 degrees so that your fingertips are facing towards your knees. Your wrists are parallel with the front of the mat. And let's take another few rounds of cat and cow. Come back into a tabletop position. Rotate your hands 180 degrees back towards the front of the room. I apologize to those of you for whom numbers and math are overwhelming. I'm done with this portion of 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees. No more. OK, come up onto your knees. Let's come into a modified Ustrasana camel pose. If your knees are sensitive, please fold over your mat or place your pillow or blankets underneath them. Press your hands into your lower back, fingertips pointing up, draw your elbows in towards each other, and then inhale, begin to lengthen your torso up, bend your upper back towards the back of the room, 
Start to turn your gaze up to the ceiling. Press your thighs forward. And take another couple cycles of breath in this modified version of Ustrasana, camel pose. Take another inhale. And exhale, crown of your head lifts back up towards the ceiling. Release your hands, bring your feet to touch, and sit down onto your heels. So really be mindful of how far you push yourself. Often Ustrasana pops up towards the end of a practice. I'm putting it here at the beginning. We're really opening up our chest. We're going to do it again. You have the option to do that modified version where your hands are pressed into your back or you can join me into the full expression of the pose. So sit up onto your knees, decide if you're sticking with that version or if you're moving on. Inhale, start to lengthen your chest up. If you're moving on, arms reach towards the back of the room. And then as you start to bend your upper back, fingertips come down and meet your heels. If that's not happening yet, you can always tuck your toes, which lifts your heels up and makes this pose a little bit more accessible. You're pressing your thighs forward. Inhale. And exhale. One more inhale. And exhale, release, lift your torso up, bring your big toes to touch. Widen your knees apart, sit down onto your heels, and then start to walk your hands out, coming into Balasana, child's pose. Lower your forearms onto the ground, forehead onto the ground, and breathe. And so where I think that the union between yoga and this Jewish tradition is particularly magnetic is that if part of our quest with regards to faith is to be able to witness and discover it, we can't do that if we're working and operating a mile a minute. So we use this breathing to slow down to focus our attention one pose at a time. And now come back up into a tabletop position. This time, walk your hands forward a couple of inches. Spread your fingers, root your palms down. If you have sensitive wrists, you can elevate your hands on blocks and then tuck your toes, start to lift your knees up, lift your hips up, straighten your legs, and come into your first Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Rotate your inner arms out towards the front of the room. Spin your inner thighs back, and then lift up onto your toes to lift your hips up high. Try to maintain the height of your hips while lowering your heels down towards the ground. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. One more cycle. Inhale. And exhale. And now inhale. Draw your torso and body forward into plank position. You can always modify this by bending your knees and lowering them down onto the ground. And then exhale, hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale forward into plank. 
Exhale, hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale forward into plank. Bend your knees, lower them down. Lower your chin and chest onto the ground. And then scoot your legs back and lower your belly onto the ground. Let's start with Bhujangasana, low cobra. Walk your hands back so that they're aligned with your upper ribs. Fingertips facing towards the front of the room. Draw your elbows in towards your chest. Press your feet into the ground. Inhale, lift your torso, heart, and chest up. Elbows hug into your torso. Keep your gaze down on the ground. And exhale, lower your head and forehead down. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, lift up into Bhujangasana, low cobra. And exhale, lower down. One more time, inhale, lift up into Bhujangasana. We're gonna hold this a couple of breaths and you can decide exactly how far up you wanna go. And exhale, lower down. Now extend your arms back alongside your torso, fingertips are towards the back of the room. Interlace your fingers, press your palms together, bend your elbows, and just let your hands rest on top of your sacrum. And then inhale, start to lengthen your arms, draw your knuckles towards the back of the room as you lift your heart and chest up. And inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. One more time. Inhale. And exhale, release. Lower down. Shalabhasana, extend your arms alongside your torso, palms face in towards your body, and then inhale, lift your heart and chest up. And I'm gonna add multiple steps and you decide which ones to take. So now inhale again, lift your feet up, spin your inner thighs up towards the ceiling, and exhale. And then inhale, lift your arms up. This re reverse superhero pose. One more inhale. And exhale, lower down. Bend your knees, lift your shins up into the air. We're going to come into Dhanurasana, wheel pose. Reach your hands back, grab onto your ankles at the same time. And then inhale, lift your chest and heart up, lift your knees up, keep your gaze down on the ground. Let's take one cycle of breath, inhale, and exhale, lower down, keep your hands on your ankles. We're gonna do it again. This time holding for three cycles of breath. So inhale, come on up into Dhanurasana. Your chest and heart are up, your knees lift up, draw your knees in towards each other. You're doing great. One more cycle of breath. And exhale, release. Release your ankles, slowly lower your shins down onto the ground and stack your hands one on top of the other and lower your forehead down. And you can swivel your hips. We're gonna pause for a moment.
So the scholar, our Musar teacher, Alan Marinus, writes about this search for faith and where we might discover faith and specifically God. And Marinus raises the question that if you were the creator, wouldn't you want to make your role as creator neither fully revealed nor fully hidden? He asks here, he says, if you were fully revealed, that would put an end to the sense of independence of the creatures who would give up on living and making an effort. On the other hand, to be totally untraceable denies the creatures an all important clue as to the nature of the universe in which they are living. The most useful and effective place to reveal your presence in creation would be only in glimpses, intuitions, and flashes. So for Marinus, as he understands Musar and Jewish tradition and life, the discovery of faith often takes place through glimpses, intuitions, and flashes. So again, to be fully explicit and transparent, we are here today to slow ourselves down so that we can catch these glimpses, intuitions, and flashes. And we're focusing physically on these chest and heart openers so that we can be open for revelation, for the receiving of these glimpses, intuitions, and flashes. Take another couple cycles of breath. And then lift your forehead up, press the palms of your hands down into the mat, by your upper ribs, fingertips point forward, elbows hug into the torso, tuck your toes, and then push yourself either up onto hands and knees or back up into a plank position. And then shift your hips up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale. And exhale. Turn your gaze between your palms, start to walk your feet forward till you find yourself in Uttanasana in a forward fold. Hands on your hips, elbows pull in towards each other. And as you take your next inhale, slowly start to stand up one vertebra at a time. Keep your gaze down. And when you're fully standing up straight, you can lift your gaze, release your hands, and you're standing in Tadasana. Step your feet together, big toes touch, heels a couple of inches apart. And let's take a few half sun salutations. Inhale, arms up, Uttita Hastasana. Exhale, folding forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, back into Uttanasana. Root into your feet, rise up, Uttita Hastasana. Arms float up, and exhale into Tadasana, arms lower down. Again, inhale, Uttita Hastasana. Exhale into Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, come halfway up. Exhale back into Uttanasana. Inhale, root into your feet, Uttita Hastasana. And exhale into Tadasana. Most of you know my rhythm at this point. So one more time, I'm just going to cue the breath. Inhale. And exhale. 
and inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale. Surya Namaskar C, Sun Salutation C. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your right leg back. Lower your right knee onto the ground. Untuck your right toes. Inhale, torso and arms lift up as you bend into your left knee. Exhale, lower your hands down. You're in a low lunge. And then inhale to lift your right shin up into the air. And then lift your left arm up, swing it back, grab onto your right ankle with your left hand. So your left hand is grabbing onto your inner right ankle, pulling that right heel in towards your tush. So you're in a low lunge with a quad stretch. Take two more cycles of breath. And I'd like you to release your left hand, but keep your right ankle and foot up in the air. Rotate your left hand back down towards the ground and then slowly release your right shin down. Tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, flatten your palm, step your left leg back. And you can either take the vinyasa or shift immediately back into Adho Mukha Shanasa, Downward Facing Dog. One cycle of breath, inhale, and exhale. Draw your right knee into your chest, step your right foot forward, lower your left knee onto the ground, untuck your left toes, inhale, lift your torso and arms up, Bending deeper into that right knee. Exhale, lower your hands down. Press your left palm into the ground. Lift your left shin up into the air. Inhale to lift your right arm up and back. Grab onto your left ankle. Bend deeper into that right knee as you pull your left ankle in towards your tush. So again, this is a low lunge with a quad stretch. And then release your right hand, but keep your left ankle up, swing your right hand back up and down, and then slowly release your left shin, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, and step your left foot forward to meet your right foot. You're in Uttanasana. Inhale into Ardha Uttanasana. Come halfway up. Exhale Uttanasana. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale arms come down. Surya Namaskar C again with a different variation. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your left leg back, lower your left knee down. Untuck your left toes. Inhale, lift your torso and arms up and deeper into your right knee. Exhale, lower your hands down. Frame your front foot. Some of you might want to grab onto your blocks or books. We're going to come into Hanamunasana, a version of the splits. 
So inhale, straighten your right leg, shift your hips back, come onto your right heel, lift your right toes up, and start to wiggle your right foot forward towards the front of the room. So those of you who are particularly flexible, this might come easy to you. You'll have your fingers or hands on the ground. Others, like me, I'm gonna lift myself up onto these blocks. I'm gonna lift my torso up. And center your hips forward towards the front of the room. Take a couple cycles of breath. And then start to walk your hands forward, bend your right knee, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, flatten your palms, step your right leg back. And just like before, you can take the vinyasa. You wanna do that with me, you can. Otherwise, shift back into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. If you're taking the vinyasa, inhale, shift your torso forward. Exhale, bend your elbows, lower halfway down. Inhale, roll over your toes into Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. And exhale, tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana. And then inhale, step your left foot forward, bend your right knee, lower it down onto the ground, untuck your right toes. And then inhale, lift your torso and arms up, bend into your left knee, exhale, lower your hands down, start to straighten your left leg, come onto your left heels, left toes point up. And you can either walk your hands forward to frame that left foot, or if you're feeling like that's too much of a stretch, pun intended, you can Lift your torso up and press your hands into your blocks. So a few cycles of breath and start to wiggle your left leg, left foot, excuse me, forward towards the front of the mat. Being mindful of the inhale and the exhale. And those of you who are using the blocks or books, you could put them off to the side, start to bend your left knee, tuck your right toes, press your palms into the ground, lift your right knee up and step your right foot forward to meet your left foot. You're in Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, lower down Uttanasana. Root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, lower down. Great job. We're gonna do one more version of Surya Namaskar C in a moment, but let's just come back to one of the key strategies that we're focusing on today. Slowing down breath by breath and step by step. And I wanna be transparent. There might be some of us who sometimes do have revelations while we're on a yoga mat, when we turn our gaze in and have the opportunity to be self-reflective. But I think the true value of yoga is how it prepares us to be off the mat when we're in life, when we're in relationships, to slow down, to be present, to focus. 
in hopes that we might catch these glimpses, intuitions, and flashes that affirm our faith. So Surya Namaskar C, one more time with a variation. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward, bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your left leg back. Lower your left knee down, untuck your left toes. Inhale, lift your torso up, arms up. Exhale, lower your hands down. Tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up. And then start to heel toe your right foot all the way to the left side of the mat. So your right foot is all the way at the left edge and then lower your left, your right knee, excuse me, down onto the mat. So your right shin is, oh, I have to take back what I promised not to do. Your right knee and shin are at a 90 degree angle parallel with the top of your mat. And now again, lower your left knee onto the ground, untuck your left toes, and press your palms into the gap into the ground. We're approaching Eka Pada Raja Kapotasana, which is a king pigeon pose. So press the palms of your hands into the ground, lift your torso and heart up, spread your collarbones, draw your shoulder blades together. And then some of us, myself included, need to modify this pose by putting a block or a book underneath the right hip because it doesn't come down to the ground. And then start to walk your hands forward towards the front of the room, lower down onto your forearms, lower your forehead onto the ground, and breathe. Take a few more cycles of breath. Lift your forehead up. Start to walk your hands back in towards your right shin. Lift your torso up, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up. If you're using the blocker book, remove it. And then lift your right leg up and back, come into plank position. And you decide, take the vinyasa or meet in downward facing dog. Together, let's take one more cycle of breath, inhale through your nose. Turn your gaze between your palms. And as you exhale, step your left foot forward. Lower your right knee onto the ground. Untuck your right toes. Inhale, lift your torso and arms up as you bend into that left knee. Exhale, lower your hands down. And tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, and this time start to heel toe your left foot towards the right edge of the mat. Lower your left knee down onto the ground. So your shin is in this 90 degree angle, parallel with the top of the mat. 
And then lower your right knee back down, untuck your right toes, walk your hands in towards your shin so that you can lift your torso, heart and chest up. Spin your inner arms out so that the eyes of your elbow, that crease in your inside of your elbow shines towards the front of the room. Take another inhale. And then as you exhale, start to walk your arms and hands forward. Slip that block or book underneath your left hook, if it, left hip, if it's up from the ground. And then as you walk your hands and arms forward, bend your elbows, lower your forearms onto the ground, lower your forehead onto the ground. And we'll be here for about a half minute. Inhaling and exhaling. Start to think about those things in your life that are neither completely hidden nor completely revealed. Lift your forehead up, start to walk your hands back in towards your shin, lift your torso, heart and chest up. Tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up. Remove the blocker book if you're practicing with one. And then lift your left leg up and back immediately into Adho Mukha Svanasana. Turn your gaze forward, walk your hands up to your wrists. Find yourself in Uttanasana, forward fold. Hands on your hips, elbows draw in towards each other, and lift your torso up. Great job. Come into either the middle of the mat or you can stay at the top of your mat, standing in Tadasana. Relax for a moment. And as we begin to move on, I'll share this with you. Again, we are approaching this holiday of Shavuot, celebrating the receipt of the Torah revelation. And one of the most common stories from the Torah that I always think of at this time of the year actually occurred earlier in our narrative when Jacob lays down in the wilderness as part of his journey and dreams of a ladder with angels ascending and descending. He sees this remarkable vision and he wakes up and exclaims, God was in this place and I did not know it. This seemingly natural space, that didn't seem so special, was the site where he had this vision. And it was an awakening for him to discover that God was in this place, Zet. Zet is the Hebrew word for this. So how can we slow down and make space to have these dreams, these visions, to recognize that there is some light creation, God, that is present in our spaces? Let's come into Vrikshasana, tree pose. 
Step your feet about hip width apart. Shift the weight of your body into your left foot. Bend your right knee, draw it in towards your torso. You can interlace your fingers around your right knee. Hug it in. And then use your right hand to open up your right knee towards the right side of the room. Grab onto your right ankle. Press your right foot into your left thigh and vacuum seal it. So press your left thigh into your right foot. Start with your hands on your hips. Keep them centered. So hips stay centered as you simultaneously open your right knee up towards the right side of the room. Pick one point on which to settle your gaze. When you feel a sense of stability, press your palms together in the center of your chest. Take another couple cycles of breath to slow down. And then if you're feeling a sense of stability, move on, extend your arms up towards the ceiling. You're in the full expression of Vrikshasana, tree pose. Modifications can be to press the sole of your foot into your shin, or to be on your toes with your heel just above your left ankle. So pick your version of Rikshasana. Let's take one more cycle of breath, inhale to lengthen, and then exhale, arms lower down, bring your right knee into your chest and step your right foot down. Excellent job. Some days we have it, some days we don't, but we're here in this moment, Zeb, this, right now. Shift the weight of your body onto your right foot, bend your left knee, draw your left knee into your chest, pause for a moment, and then take your left hand on your left knee, open it up to the left side of the room, Reach down, grab onto your left ankle and press your left foot into your inner right thigh. Press your inner right thigh back into your left foot. Hands on your hips. Center your hips while opening up your left knee to the left side of the room. Hands pressed together in the center of your chest, taking any modification that feels right for you. Once you feel like you have your stability here, you can lift your arms up into the full expression of Vrikshasana, tree pose. One more inhale. And exhale, arms lower down alongside your torso. Bring your left knee back into your chest and step your left foot down. And shake it off. And come back into Tadasana. So we're going to move on in just a moment to our peak pose. And before I do that, I want to share with you a beautiful commentary idea about this dream that Jacob had and his exclamation that God is in this place and he did not know it. And this comes from the words of Torah from Rabbi Shefa Gold, who says, Jacob's journey is blessed at its outset with a dream and with a moment of awakening. In the dream, God shows Jacob the stairway that connects the realms of heaven and earth and then gives him a promise. Through his blessing, we ourselves become that stairway. When I become available to this flow, I am awakened to the most awesome and transformative truth. God was here all along and I didn't know it. This very moment and this place here where I stand is at once God's home, and the doorway to all realms. Our journey begins and brings us the blessing of Zed, 
this and becoming fully present to this moment here and now, light is revealed. Just think that's beautiful. This idea of being present in this moment, Za, right now, to catch those glimpses, those intuitions, and those flashes. So our peak pose is Nata Rajasana, a modified Lord of the Dance pose. Start with your feet hip width apart, hands on top of your hips, shift the weight of your body onto your left foot. This is a combination of a chest opener and a balance pose with some extension. So weight of your body is on your left foot, bend your right knee, lift your right ankle and shin up. Release your right arm, and then I want you to swing your right arm up and back to grab on to your right ankle, your outer right ankle, and pull your right heel in towards your tush, and then release your left hand from your hip, press your left thumb and index finger together, straighten your left arm, Start to lift your left arm up and then start to lift your heart and chest up and lower your torso down. So you're going out and down with your torso as your right knee lifts up higher into the air. Three cycles of breath like this. Inhale. And exhale and inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale, lift your torso and the crown of your head back up, lower your left hand, left hand back on your left hip, release your right hand, keep your shin bent and slowly lower your right foot back onto the ground and release your hands, shake it off, bend your knees, wiggle your hips. Awesome job. Second side, shift the weight of your body onto your right foot. And before we take our next action, take a moment for Svadhyaya. What is it that might be revealed? What are the flashes, the glimpses, those intuitions that you might be able to catch while you're in the pose and breathing slowly and being present? So weight of your body on your right foot, hands on your hips, bend your left knee, lift your left heel up towards your tush, Release your left hand, lift your left arm up and back, grab onto your outer left ankle and pull your left hip uh, heel in towards your tush. Release your right hand, press your right thumb and index finger together, start to lift your right arm up and then Lift your heart and chest up and lower your torso down into a modified version of Nata Jarasana, Lord of the Dance. Take two more cycles of breath. And then lift your torso and the crown of your head up, lower your right arm down and pause for a moment. You're going to release your left ankle, but keep your left shin and knee bent. And then slowly lower your left foot down. Excellent job. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. 
Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees, squat down, and then sit down on your tush. Extend your legs out in front of you. Bend your right knee. Let your right knee fall over to the right side of the room. Press the sole of your foot into that inner left thigh. So you've already done this in Vrikshasana, in tree pose, but now you have the luxury of sitting down on the ground. And those of you who know that you like to use a belt or strap in your forward folds, you can have that handy. I'll demonstrate it. This is Janu Shirsasana. Lift your arms up and rotate your torso slightly to the left so that your torso is aligned with your left leg. And then start to fold forward and either use your strap to loop it around your left foot, or you can just grab on, let your hands fall onto your left shin, ankle, or foot. Three cycles of breath. Inhale and exhale, and inhale, and exhale, one more inhale, and exhale, release your foot, lift your torso up, and lift your right knee back up towards the ceiling and lengthen your right leg towards the front of the room. Second side, bend your left knee. Let your left knee fall open and over to the left side of the room. Press your left foot into your inner right thigh. Arms lift up. Rotate your torso slightly to the right so that it's over your right leg and then start to fold forward. You can use the strap to make a ball around your foot, or you can release and lower your hands onto your shin, your ankle, or your foot. Three cycles of breath. Release, lift your torso up, lift your left knee back up towards the ceiling, and bend your right knee, plant your right foot on the ground, arms extend out in front of you, and slowly lower down onto your back. And you can walk your feet in. Shift your hips over to the right edge of the mat. Let your knees fall over to the left. Turn your gaze to the right. Extend your right arm out to the right. Just a couple cycles of breath. So we pass through this twisting pose. Knees come up towards the ceiling. Shift your hips over to the left edge of the mat as your knees fall over to the right. Knees come up to the height of your right hip. And then turn your gaze out to the left. You can extend your left arm out to the left. And knees come back up to the ceiling. Draw your knees into your chest and then extend your left leg forward. Your right, uh, excuse me, your right leg forward. And feel free to use any props that you'd like to settle into Shavasana. If you have access to your blanket or pillow, one option is to place it underneath your knees, or you might want to place it on top of your pelvis to weight yourself down. 
and just release into the floor. Resuming that slow and steady cycle of breath. and wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. Draw your knees into your chest. Let your knees fall over to the right and roll on to the right side of your torso, pause. and press both hands into the floor to push yourself up into Sukhasana. Right shin stacked in front of your left shin. Hands on top of your knees, palms facing up. And so our time exploring this soul trait of emuna of faith, is not for the purpose of revealing something specific, but giving us the tools to be present in the moment so that we can catch these glimpses of light that affirm our faith, the faith that each one of us embodies knowingly or unknowingly. Press the palms together in the center of your chest. And my gosh, if you have had a recent moment of revelation where you have seen that glimpse of light, you've had an intuition, you've seen a flash, let your mind settle on that, honor it. Let that be a source of strength. And inhale, lengthen up through your torso, lower your chin to your chest. Namaste and Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much for being here.